Okay, so we should be good to go now. So guys, I I think this is maybe the first webinar or training call we've ever done about telesales, selling over the phone. We maybe have mentioned it, you know, here and there, uh, but I don't remember actually ever doing any any training on it because that's really not not our model. I mean, that's not you know, it's not who Senior Solutions is. We we don't advocate selling over the phone, but uh, you know, we're in a different environment now. I mean, this is uh, this is something that we've never experienced before. Um, and and two, maybe you're watching this. Um, maybe you're watching this webinar, you know, on YouTube three years from now. And you're like, you know, what is he talking about? Well, we're this COVID nineteen, the coronavirus. You know, March twenty seventh, twenty twenty. Just to put this into perspective, is when we're recording this. And most states right now, there's a few that aren't, but most states are shelter at home. All businesses are closed except for you know, what they consider to be essential uh, essential um, businesses. We're gonna have to see how this thing pans out. And like I mentioned yesterday or last week on our last call is that this is a changing environment. So, you know, the information I'm giving you today, it may, it may change next week. Um, but here's what I know, just to give you an update. Um, I've already been talking to a few agents that are um, attempting to sell over the phone. And I've talked to a few agents that are still out there, you know, door knocking and not door knocking the fact that they're treating business as usual, but very cautiously. You know, they're not necessarily trying to get into the home. They're just door knocking simply to have the face to face, keeping the social distancing six, seven, eight feet, whatever it is, backing way off of the door and just, you know, presenting themselves letting me, the client know, hey, this is who I am. This is the reason why I'm stopping. You had mailed in this form. I'm the agent that's been assigned to get you the information. Um, you know, if you've got a little bit of time, I, you know, we can do this over the phone and through the mail. And I think we talked about that a little bit um, last week. But this week, what we're going to be talking about is specifically selling final expense over the phone, doing telesales. Now, here's Here's the disclaimer. I'm not a professional, okay? I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not a professional at, at, at telesales. It's not what I, you know, normally do. I'm probably not even qualified to, to teach on this subject. But here's what I do know, Jimmy, is that I spent, oh man, I say this week, I'd say I spent, I can't even tell you how many hours on YouTube, just searching for good content on telesales. In fact, if you go to YouTube and just type in selling over the phone, final expense, telesales, there's a ton of videos that come up. But I don't know if you've ever watched any of them. There's like no content. It, it's just a bunch of lip service going over different stuff and no real content as far as how to make the phone call, what in, in, you know, trying to find a, you know, trying to find a script. It's a very, uh, there's not a lot of good data out there, not a lot of good training, in my opinion, on selling, you know, over the phone. So I don't know who's an expert. I don't know who's, um, who's doing it. But here's what I can tell you, um, is that I did develop a script. And basically what I did is I just kind of modified the script that we're already using. Got on the phone yesterday, dialed, it was actually two days ago, dialed for like six hours. And I'll go through my numbers later, but able to make quite a few connections. And actually I sold two policies over the phone utilizing telesales and utilizing the script that I'm gonna share with you guys right now. But here's the thing about telesales. You gotta be willing to do the work. So, you know, hopping on the phone and calling, you know, making 20 dials ain't gonna cut it. If you, during this environment, if you wanna be successful 
on the phone and successful doing telesales, man, you you just you you better be ready to do the work and do the the ten dollar an hour work so that you can receive the three hundred to five hundred dollar an hour work. And what do I mean by that? Is that you got to be a professional telemarketer, meaning is that you got to be on the phone and just dial, 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 and dial. Now, if you have a, if if you want to invest in the dialer, that's fine. I didn't. I did it the old-fashioned way. I just got on the phone. I went to, I went into Opt. I went back two years, about a year and a half, two years. Printed out a bunch of old leads. I printed out like 50 old leads. I didn't, whether I sold them or not, I didn't even know. Okay, I just printed a bunch of old leads and started pounding the phone. So what I was doing is going through my old leads, which I'm gonna continue to do. If you don't have old leads, then you gotta figure out some lead sources. And Jimmy and I will talk about lead sources at the end of the call. I wanna hop right into the script and give you guys some really good content and share with you exactly what what I did to generate um, $1,200 and a little bit over 1,200 bucks um, in, in AP. But if you're going to do, if you're going to work on the phone, guys, it you're going to need a lot of leads, uh, more leads than you than you think. And the more leads, you're going to be able to make more contacts. You're going to be able to have more conversations. But you got to be willing to to dedicate and block out time. I'm just telling you, calling 30 minutes, an hour a day ain't going to cut it during these times. You got to be willing to put in five, six, seven, you know, whatever you want, but minimum five or six hours a day just pounding the phone. And you think about it, man, if you if you bought, just do the math. If you bought 100 B leads, it's 150 bucks. And you called every lead 10 times, that's a thousand dials. Okay. Are you telling me you can't make two or three sales out of that? You're going to stumble in to people that are just ready to buy, but you won't stumble into the sales. You won't get lucky if you don't do the work. Does that make sense, Jimmy? Yep. Hey, Joe, I, real quick, you're, yeah, go, you please. You have your initial screen. I don't know if you, if you uh, shared your regular screen or not, or that's the way you want it. Uh, let's see here. How about this? There you go. All right, perfect. That's the screen I meant to have up. Thank you very much. Um, go, did you just want to say that or did you have something else that you wanted to no, talk that, about? That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So here's what we're going to do, man. Um, uh, we're going to cut right to the chase and I'm going to get right to the script. Um, and Jimmy and I are going to role play it. And Jimmy, just... Um, Role play, give me any crazy objections you want if you want, if you just want to play along and be a nice customer. But here's the here's the here's the key, guys. You gotta have enough leads where if someone tells you to screw off and never call them again, is that it doesn't get you upset. Like you you don't you need enough leads where you don't get emotionally attached to the outcome of every single phone call. What was it we called that, Jimmy? Um lead lead pop lead lead poverty right explain to these agents i'm going to advance the screen but explain to them what lead poverty is what that is it's when you don't have very many leads to work maybe you're working 20 30 leads and so you've run through them a few times and now you're getting frustrated and you're getting mad because you're not getting the success you want because the people you're getting a hold of they're rejecting you for one reason or the other, or maybe you can't get a hold of them. So every time you call a lead, if you have a negative outcome, you get real emotional over it because you're in lead poverty. See, when you're working leads, it's a numbers game. So you have to have enough leads to sift through to find the sales, right? So when we're talking about B leads, Traditionally, on a B lead, you're going to make five to eight percent, or close five to eight percent of your sales. So, out of a hundred leads, you know, if you're new at this, you're probably going to be around the five, maybe four. But uh, as you gain experience and your your skill set increases, you know, you might be closer to the eight. 
So think about this. I mean, like Joe mentioned earlier, 100 leads, B leads is 150 bucks. You make one sell, you're profitable, right? So yeah. you cut 5% in half because you're a rookie, that's two and a half sales, right? That puts you way ahead. So think about that. You're really just trying to make two sales out of a hundred. So don't get caught up emotional when you get rejected or you don't get the success you want because it's a numbers game. You're sifting and you're just looking for the low hanging fruit. You're looking for the people that want what you're offering, looking for the people that are interested. You know, they're scared what's going on. You know, they want to protect their family and they're ready to act and do something now. And guess what? You got them on the phone. That, that's who you're looking for. You're not trying to persuade or convince somebody to uh, uh, to listen to you. You you want the people that are ready to listen to you, if that makes sense. Yeah, so. I, I agree with you 100%, guys. This is We're not in the convincing business. Listen, if you're on the phone and they're a jerk and, you know, they just like, don't try to convince them, man. Just move on to the next. Like, wipe it clean, man. You got to have thick skin. You got to be able to to move through these leads very quickly because it is a numbers game. You want to be able to get through as many leads as you can, um, proficiently as you can. Because when you when you when you hook somebody, when you get the red client that's ready to buy, I'm gonna tell you, you're get, you're gonna be on the phone for at least an hour. I was on the phone for the the two sales that I made. It took me minimum an hour. I think the one call I was on was probably an hour and twenty minutes by time by the time I was done doing everything. Okay, but the deal was sealed. I had a policy number. You know, I mean, everything was done. So just you know, just you know, just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and move on. Oh, just real quick, subscribe to our channel. Um, I know most of the agents that are with us obviously are probably subscribed, but if you're uh, checking this content out on YouTube, um, subscribe to our channel. We put out new information every single week and it's open to the public and we wanna make sure everybody's getting the content. We share all of our scripts. We share stuff that no, no other agency shares. Um, in fact, there's one company out there, Jimmy, that. Uh, uh, I think they want you to pay like 200 bucks to get their their final expense telemarketing script. <laughs> so just like, oh my God. But I'm going to share with you guys what's uh, um, working with me, um, working for me. Again, just real quick, if you're if you're watching this as a replay on YouTube, maybe it's 10 years from now. I don't know. But we are in the middle of a crisis, uh, the pandemic of COVID-19, and this is today's date. I'm marking it, March 20th, 2020, and this is Senior Solutions. I'm Joe Johnson. That's Jimmy Hernandez, my partner, and this is our this is our script. So, um, Jimmy, I know you're not familiar with this script because I just put it together a few days ago. So. Um, if you don't mind, just why don't you be the client and let me go through the script. Sounds good, Joe. Let's do so it. I've got it broken. Guys, I've got the script broken down. It's actually a it's a it's only a two page script, uh, but there are, you know, obviously there's some 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 notes in here, some things that we need to do to go off script. Now, the other thing, too, is that I'm not the best at reading scripts, so I'm probably not going to read this word for word. Uh, I have a tendency to go off scripts and I'm not that great at it, but I'm going to do my my very best. The main thing with any type of script is that you want to read it, you want to memorize it, and it's not necessarily the words on the script, it's how you deliver it. It's your delivery that matters. We all know the saying is it's not what you say, but how you say it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to go through the script, then we're going to break it down and talk about all the little nuances and the caveats and you know, about cadence and, you know, tonality and all that stuff. But um, without further delay, Jimmy, I'm going to ring you up and you just answer the phone. Uh, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Jimmy. Yes. Oh, hey, hey, Jimmy, this is Joe with Senior Benefits right here in Bear County, Texas. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. 
what can I do for you? Well, good, Jimmy. Well, the reason that I called is that a while back, you had filled out a card that we mailed you that was talking about the state regulated programs to pay for final expenses. That would be like cremation and burial. But the, the thing is, Jimmy, we have no record that this information was ever taken care of. Do you recall ever receiving the information about these programs? No, I I even mailed in like three or four cards and no one ever came out. Okay, well, I, I, I apologize for that. And I'm actually the supervisor with the company. And that's the reason why I'm calling you now, because it's actually my job to get you the information that you requested. Now, Jimmy, I'm assuming um, that when you did mail those cards in that your main concern was you just want to make sure is that when you do pass away, you're not leaving your family with a financial burden. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then um, out of curiosity, have you done any pre-planning? Like have you gone to a funeral home and made plans or do you currently have any final expense plans in place now? No, we, we're talking about maybe going to a funeral home and looking into that, but we haven't done it yet. Well, the funeral home is certainly an option. I'll, I'll, I'll cover that with you too. That's part of the information that I want to, I want to give you. Um, Jimmy, do you feel like five to 10,000 would be enough to take care of your final arrangements or would you like some information on maybe a larger amount? Oh, probably a little bit larger. I know that we buried a, a relative recently and it was closer to 12,000. Yeah, it just depends on where you are, Jimmy. Uh, I mean, as you know, a burial could be anywhere from, uh, I've seen them as cheap as 7,500, as expensive as 15, and cremation, you know, you can go cheap and get it done maybe for a thousand bucks. And I've seen cremations with all the works be as much as, you know, five or 6,000. Um, but the, uh, the important thing is, is for me to get you the information in which you did request. Um, do you, do you know how these state regulated plans work? No. Okay. Let me do this. If you don't mind, let me just take, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I know this is important for you. If you don't mind, let me just take just a minute and go over how the plans work and cover all the guarantees of the state regulated programs. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. So guys, I'm going to call a little bit of a timeout. That's the first part of the script. Okay. Um, so we can critique it how I did. Um, you know, the main thing is, Jimmy, with any phone script is that you don't want to sound like a telemarketer. You just need to have a conversation with these. Um, you know, just be real, be genuine and have have some concern in your voice um, when you're talking to these people. Um, Jimmy, anything you want to um, anything you want to add or any little comments you think um that you want to put in before we move on yeah i i do want to you know mention you know if you're listening to this call do you notice how that conversation on joe's part was very um i'm going to say non-salesy right it, he didn't sound like a telemarketer he's keeping it real and part of that is he's talking slow most telemarketers are trying to spit out all the information really quickly right because they're thinking that they got to hurry up and and say their script as fast as they can before somebody hangs up on them but that's exactly why people hang up on them because they know it's a script see when joe's talking he's talking slow and he's taking his time and he's talking like he knows the person like this is a real you know conversation like it's supposed to be so right slow. it's conversation style scripting is what it is yes and so, you know, I just want to make sure that you guys don't miss that. So when you get the person on the phone, slow down. Joe has a saying when we do our, our trainings in person, he says that he reminds himself to go slow. And sometimes he goes slow that he, what, annoys yourself? How do you say that, Joe? I, I do. <laughs> I, so the, the saying is, yeah, go go low and slow. So, you know, maybe go down an octave and, and talk slow. And I do. Uh, when I'm doing the script, I talk so slow that I annoy myself. <laughs> but that's the reason why it works, right? Because you you got to make sure you're grabbing their attention. Now, I'm just going to insert 
like my little twist or my little style to this? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Okay. So what helps me feel like a real person with the other person I'm calling is to address the situation that's going on right now. So in my case, I would say something like, you know, this is Jimmy with Senior Solutions. How are you currently doing with the coronavirus that's going on? Right. So I got their attention. Yeah. Good point. At this point, they're not really sure what Senior Solutions is. Right. But now they realize I'm not a telemarketer and then I can proceed with the script. So whatever that little rabbit trail, you know, takes us, I can bring us right back and say, well, Joe, you know, the reason for my call is a while back you filled out the card so I can bring it back to, you know, where we need to be. So that's just one little thing that I do different. But Joe, I'll awesome. turn it over to you. Yeah, and I would probably insert that too. I mean, and I and I have been, I just didn't put it on the script because, you know, this is a script that will probably, you know, continue to use on. So, okay, guys, so we got the first part of the script. Uh, from here, we want to transition into the Senior Solutions flip chart, complete the flip chart presentation, over the phone, then we want to transition into asking the health question. So once I asked Jimmy, um, so Jimmy, um, do you know how these state regulated plans work? He said, no. Let me just take a minute to, to go over how the programs work. Guys, right now, I'm sitting in my office. I've got my flip chart right here in front of me. What I want to do is kind of do maybe slightly abridged, but I want to do my flip chart presentation with my flip chart in my hand to the client, the same pretty much as if I was sitting next to him. Okay, I want to tell my little story. So the the uh, and I don't have the whole flip chart on this presentation, but you guys know this is the this is ba this is the first page of the flip chart. So the first thing I want to do is well, Jimmy, the first thing I want to just explain real quick is that um, I don't work for an insurance company. Okay. Our company, Senior Solutions, is that we're actually a state licensed brokerage that offer these state regulated plans. So we work with many, many different um, insurance companies. You see, Jimmy, my job as a state licensed field underwriter is actually just to assist you and help you enroll and help you get qualified. So what I'm going to end up doing, Jimmy, is, is just asking you some very few simple um, medical questions. And then I'll be able to identify which of the top rated carriers is going to offer you the best program. And it could be Mutual of Omaha or Royal Neighbors or Prosperity. Uh, I'm not sure at this time, Jimmy. But the thing I want you to know and understand, Jimmy, is that regardless of what company we end up going with, is that it's going to be an A plus top rated company. Okay. Yes. So I, want to, so I want to get his acknowledgement on that. And then I'm just going to go through the flip chart, guys. And Jimmy, as you're probably already aware, you know, final expenses is that, you know, when we pass away, unfortunately, the first thing we do is we we really we just create a, a, a bill for our family. And whether you're going to do something very simple, like a very basic cremation, or you're going to do something more elaborate, like a full uh, full burial with a with a viewing. The first thing we do when we pass away is that we're leaving our family with some type of, of financial burden. And like you had already mentioned, you know that average funeral costs are, you know, can be anywhere for a burial, anywhere from, you know, from 10 to, to 15,000. Now, Jimmy, most of the people that send in this card, and trust me, we've got, there's literally thousands of people just like you that are sending these cards in every single week. But typically, most people are sending the card in and they're telling us that they're sending it in for one of three reasons. And I just want you to tell me which of these do you think best describes your current situation. Number one is, is that they don't have any protection in place and they're worried about leaving that uh, financial burden upon their family at their passing. Two is, some clients have a little bit of coverage, maybe a policy they bought years ago. They just feel like it's not quite enough and would like to add a little bit more. And lastly, clients tell us that they have currently plenty of coverage, but they still would like to leave maybe a special benefit 
to a special family member, maybe a, you know, a child or grandchild, or maybe even their favorite charity or their church. But Jimmy, you tell me which one of these do you think best applies to you? You know, Joe, I don't have anything in place. I used to have coverage when I was working, but I didn't realize uh, that I, I lose the coverage when I retired. So I don't have anything right now. Nothing in place now. Okay, all right, um, very good. Jimmy, the next thing I wanna cover with you is that the all the state regulated plans that we offer, they have five features that are necessary to help seniors today secure proper final expense coverage so that financial burden does not get passed on to your family. Number one is, is that these plans are gonna offer affordable premiums that are guaranteed never to increase regardless of any changes to your age or health. So Jimmy, what that means is, is that, you know, I know you're 65 today, but when you're 85 or 90, you certainly don't want a plan where the, where the premiums will go up. This will be locked in for the rest of your life. You never have to worry about it. Also, the death benefit is guaranteed never to decrease. So on some plans, Jimmy, you may start out with 10,000, but if you don't read the fine print, you know, if you live to you know, 80 or 85 or 90, the, the value may actually decrease to only a couple of thousand. These plans are guaranteed never to decrease. Also, Jimmy, we're gonna guarantee that the that the benefit the payout amount is going to be paid income tax free to your family what that means is is that um, if i deliver a check to your children for 10 or 15 thousand they don't have to worry about claiming that on their taxes okay well that's excellent. also also what were you going to say that's excellent okay also jimmy it the plan is guaranteed never to be canceled due to any changes in your age or health, unlike other plans. Now, Jimmy, there's I'm not gonna name any names, but there's a lot of companies, you've seen them on TV, or probably got it through the mail, that you know do life insurance through the mail. Unfortunately, a lot of these plans are, they're not the state regulated plans that we offer, and the coverage actually ends at age 80. So we wanna make sure that we put you in a plan that's gonna last you your entire life. And then lastly, Jimmy, is that all the plans that we offer have guaranteed cash value that accumulates over time. And you can use that cash for emergencies or other financial needs, okay? Okay. And then lastly, Jimmy, I just wanna let you know with these programs, there are no medical exams. So we're not gonna send a nurse out to your house to make you get on a scale or pee in a cup or do anything like that, okay? Um, in fact, that's the reason why I'm calling you. The reason why I'm calling you is because I'm a state licensed field underwriter. So I can help, I, by asking you health questions, I can get you qualified um, right over the phone. So from here, guys, now that's the that's the entire flip chart presentation. And, and Jimmy, I, my recommendation on this, and we're going off script here, and you tell me what you think. I don't think we need to take it any further than that. Um, or do you think that we should go into like proper final expenses, the do nothing, the acquire a prepaid funeral, or acquire a final or or uh, do a final expense plan? It would be the um, you know the next page on the flip chart. I agree with you, Joe, because on the phone, you want to shorten your presentation. You yes. don't want to be long. So, you know, that's 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 where you need to, to start going into field underwriting. Right. Okay. So that and and guys, that's what I did when I when I did my sales, when I did my flip chart. Now, normally when I'm in the home, I do the entire flip chart, but I think with this, we just want to do an abbreviated version. So really all we're doing is we're gonna tell the story. Um, we're going to ask the three questions and I'm going to go over the five guarantees. That's it. Okay. And then from there, I want to go into the uh, the transition part. So once once I've done that and I've talked about, you know, because that's a good transition for me to say, you know, Jimmy, um, and I'll just repeat it. And Jimmy, and finally, there's no medical exams. What that means is, is that um, we're not going to send a nurse out to 
you know, ask you health questions, make you get on a scale or, or pee in a cup, nothing like that. In fact, Jimmy, that's the reason why I'm calling you because as a state licensed field underwriter, like I said before, my job is to really to kind of go over the health questions with you and help get you pre-qualified, okay? Okay. He's gonna say, okay, now from there, guys, I'm going right into the into the health questions. And unlike we do it in the home, I'm gonna ask more health questions. I'm pretty much gonna go through the entire app on the script because I wanna make sure I'm leaving no stone unturned because I want to be able to go from here directly to uh, pretty much like the phone interview. Now here's the first health questions I'm going to do. Now Jimmy, um, I know this may seem silly. I know this may seem like a silly question, but I am required to ask you, um, are you currently hospitalized or residing in a nursing home? No. Okay, all right. And then have you ever been treated for Alzheimer's, dementia, or ALS? I can't remember, Joe. <laughs> okay, I think you're being funny, right? But you you don't right. uh, you, you don't have dementia or Alzheimer's, I'm assuming. No. Okay. All right. Very good. I appreciate your uh, your sense of humor. Um, have you ever tested positive for AIDS or HIV? No, sir. Okay. And then, do you require any assistance, Jimmy, for what they call um, activities of daily living? That could be eating, bathing, dressing toiletries or taking medication no i'm fully independent okay uh do you use a you don't know, by chance you use a walker or a wheelchair no okay now guys if caveat off script timeout if they did say well yeah i you know i use a wheelchair okay it's not a problem jimmy out of curiosity is it um do you need the wheelchair all the, all the time are you confined or do you just use it once in a while no i can still get up and down so that makes a difference, guys, because on some of the carriers, um, some carriers, if, you, if you've if you been prescribed a wheelchair, like you're declined, other ones, you can have a wheelchair as long as you're not confined to it. You can still even get um, preferred coverage. Um, Jimmy, in the last 12 months, have you, um, have you used oxygen? No. Okay. And um, the next set of questions, Jimmy, I'm going to ask you are going back in the last three years only, okay? So okay. in the last three years, have you um, have you had any type of internal cancer? No. Okay, and what about any type of uh, kidney issues like kidney dialysis, failure, or kidney disease? No, I don't have any issues. Okay, and then, well, okay, let, let me just go through this and then uh, it sounds like you're really healthy, but I am required to just ask all the health, health questions because I, I do want you, I want to get you qualified for the maximum discounts, okay? Okay. Um, any liver disease, um, hepatitis B, C, or anything with the liver? No, sir. Okay, and then um, have, you, have you ever been diagnosed as having congestive heart failure? No. And what about any lung issues, COPD, uh, chronic asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis? No, I don't have anything like that. Okay. So guys, I'm going to go through that and then I'm going to go through the next set of questions. And Jimmy, the next set of questions, um, we're, we only have a two-year look back, okay? Okay. So uh, in the last two years, have you had a heart attack? No. Okay. What about any type of heart surgery, stent, bypass? No, not at all. Okay. Do you take medications for chest pains or angina? No. Okay. Um, what about a pacemaker or a defibrillator? No. Okay. Do you take any medications for like an irregular heartbeat, like AFib or any other type of um, heart issue? No, I sure don't. Okay. And then what about um, a stroke or even a mini stroke? Have you had anything like that in the last two years? No, thank God. Okay. And uh, bipolar depression or schizophrenia? My wife says so, but no, I've never had that. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Um, I, I feel you on that one. And then um, the next ones are, are Parkinson's, cerebral palsy, or multiple sclerosis? No, sir, I don't have any. Okay. No, no type of neurological disorder at all, Jimmy? No. Okay. And then uh, last two questions. Do you use any... Um, tobacco or any type of nicotine products? No, I don't smoke. 
No smoke. Okay. And then do you take anything for high blood sugar or diabetes? No. Okay. So time out off script just for a little bit. This guy is like super, super healthy, which is great. Um, but as a side note, because we are going th through and we're doing a really thorough job of build underwriting, because I want to make sure I can transition very quickly to do my, my phone interview. Um, is that if there were any issues, you wanna make sure you do your little bit of drill down questions, okay? So if Jimmy had had a heart attack, oh, okay. Your heart attack was, uh, you know, let's say, well, it was, you know, it was three years ago. Okay, well, are you taking medications for it? Are you probably, your doctor probably gave you some blood thinners, that sort of thing. I just want it in my mind. I wanna know, cause I wanna be able to do my filled underwriting properly. Um, if he says yes to, to sugar, to the diabetes questions, make sure you're ready. And it's not part of the script. If you see it's in the lower, the different type of print, those are your follow-up questions. So if Jimmy had said, yes, I, yeah, I take medication for diabetes. Oh, okay, um, Jimmy, out of curiosity, do you recall how old were you? Now just play along with this part. How old were you when you first got diagnosed with your diabetes? Oh, uh, I think it was about 55. 55, okay. Um, and then what do you, what kind of medication do you do pills or insulin or a combination of both? Pills. Pills only. Okay. Um, had, have you ever taken insulin before? No, no, sir. Okay. And Jimmy, would you say your diabetes is under control with your current medication? Yes. Okay. Any complications like neuropathy, uh, diabetic nerve pain, insulin shock, diabetic coma or amputation? Nope. Okay. Well, very good. Um, Jimmy, are there any other health issues I didn't ask you that we that I forgot to mention or ask? Mm, I have uh, high cholesterol. Did you ask me that? No, I didn't ask that. We can. I what what medications are you currently taking now, Jimmy? What are uh, they? Uh, you could just tell me what they're for, if you know. I take. Uh, is it Lipitor? Lipitor, yeah, that's a um, for um, was that cholesterol or blood blood pressure? Oh, I I don't know. I thought it was high cholesterol. I think it may be too, but that's not one of the. Um, we really don't um, ask that question, Jimmy. That um, we figure everybody in their fifties or sixties probably has taken that type of medication. I was more worried just about the serious stuff. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, good. Well, now I know exactly what you're eligible to apply for. Let me do this, Jimmy. Let me just show you the plans that we that I can offer you that are going to give you the biggest uh, discounts. But before I go over all the options, Jimmy, I want you to do me a favor. You got to promise me something. And just promise me this is that what I'm going to be showing you, if it does not fit into your budget, will you promise me that you'll let me know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, because I can make adjustments here. I mean, um, I can make adjustments to find a program that I promise that will fit into your budget. And at the end of the day, wouldn't you agree that, I mean, at least having some coverage in place is better than not having anything at all? Yes. All right, so guys, from there, just call a quick timeout. We're keeping this very conversational. This is the exact script that I used. Um, you know, of course, you can tell I'm going off script a little bit. I'm ad-libbing here and there. So I want you guys to be able to, you know, use your own voice inflection. I want you to, uh, you know, add in some of your own language so it sounds like you. This is this is how Joe Johnson talks. I want your script to sound like how you talk. That way it's more natural. Uh, so from here, what you want to do is you want to select the best carrier and do the three-option worksheet, kind of a modified what I'm doing is I'm not exactly doing a three option worksheet. I'll show you here in just a minute. I'm doing a modification of kind of a, 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 a worksheet. OK, so I'm going to roll into the second part of the uh, of the, the, the last part of the script. Which is from here. Um, now that I know what Jimmy's you know, applied for, he told me that he promises that if what I'm showing him over the phone doesn't fit, he's going to let me know. Hey, Jimmy, could you do me a favor? Could you just grab um, a pen and paper. I want you to write some stuff down. I'm going to lay out some options for you, okay? Okay. Just let me know. I'll wait. Just let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. 
Okay, um, Jimmy, the first thing I just want to let you know is that I am required to show you the maximum benefit allowed under this program. So based on your age and everything, the maximum benefit of coverage that would be um, allowed is 35,000. Okay, and then so for us to put 35,000 in place for you, Jimmy, what you would need to set aside on a monthly basis, it's $169.31. Now, how does that fit into your budget? Oh yeah, that's that's a little bit too high. You got something about eighty dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Jimmy's already given me. He's already Jimmy's already going to the next part of the script without. So what we're what? So guys, just just a real quick timeout on the script, okay? Just do a little um, coaching on this. So once you've identified the carrier, make sure you have your mobile app or you know your computer up your tablet so you can multitask you can be on the the carrier website um, so you can get that quote to him really really quick um, so i just want him to write that one number down i say 169 dollars i know that there's probably you know there's a 95 percent chance that he's going to say i'm out of my mind that's way too much i can't do that and that's what i want him to say because what we want because in negotiating or doing payment closes over the phone guys you you want the only objection to be the premium does that make sense i don't want any other objection so i want to give a super high premium because if i give them you know well five thousand is thirty five dollars oh okay well let me think about it where do you go from there i give them 169 dollars the only thing the only objection is the premium so once I fix the premium problem, we can move on. It's I hope that I hope that makes sense. But this this process of selling over the phone and even sometimes in person, it works really well. So hey Jimmy, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go through this again, but instead of giving me like instead of you offering me a premium that you can't afford, let me dig for it a little bit, okay? Yeah. So Jimmy, based on your based on your age, the maximum coverage that we could offer you would be um, thirty five thousand, and what you would need to set aside on a monthly basis is one hundred and sixty nine dollars and thirty one cents. Now, how does that fit into your budget, Jimmy? Ooh, that's no, that's too high. Okay, well, no problem. I I I I I understand how you feel. I'm just required to show you what the maximum. Um, coverage is but remember when i said before i can make adjustments to find a program that will fit your budget yes so jimmy you you tell me based on based on your budget you tell me what number works for you in other words what can you set aside comfortably on a monthly basis that's not going to take any food off your table oh about 80 dollars a month about 80 okay so guys like the like the i want jimmy to close himself on the payment he says 80 dollars. no problem jimmy um let me let me develop a plan for you okay so jimmy says 80 what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna back in i'm gonna give him a plan for somewhere around 72 75 bucks hey jimmy i know you said you could afford 80 how about i save you a few bucks let me show you a plan i've got a plan here for $75, $75 a month, we'll offer you $15,000 of coverage. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, great, we're gonna move on. Now, let's say you get the objection where Jimmy says, uh, I like, like you're just uh, indifferent, Jimmy, like I don't know what I can afford. Let's try that, okay? Sure. So um, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do the last part of the script. So Jimmy, you tell me based on your budget, you tell me what number works for you. In other words, like what can you set aside comfortably on a monthly basis that is not going to be a financial burden to you? Well, I don't know. Why don't you just tell me how much it costs? No problem. I can lay out, I can certainly lay out some options for you. So if 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 he does, if he gives me that objection, then I may do like a modified thing. Okay, perfect. Jimmy, could you do me a favor? on that piece of paper that I gave you, could you just write down um, the number 15,000? Yes. Okay. And then to the to the right of that, write down 10,000. 
and then write down the number 5,000. Okay. Let me give you quotes for those three. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go, Jimmy, for the 15,000, you would need to set aside $75.35. Okay. For the, for the 10,000, it's going to be $56.85. And then for the 5,000, it's going to be $32.05. Jimmy, you tell me which of these work best for you. Oh, I like I like the 5,000. That works best for me. Perfect. Guys, I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to write it. So he says he can do the five. How about, Jimmy, you say, well, I'm not really sure at this time. You know, let me think about it or I don't know. How about you're just like, you know, you're not really, you, you know, you're giving me a different answer. Say that. Okay. Well, I'll keep you in mind, Joe. I, I need to think it over. Okay. Jimmy, let me ask you a question. It sounds like to me, uh, I'm getting the feeling here is that that the the monthly budget is a is a major concern for you. Am I correct? Uh, I'll pick one of those. I just I just want to think about it. No, no. What I'm saying, Jimmy, is that I didn't give you any. I didn't give you the three options. We're going back. We're going back in the script to where you're not the client that says, "Well, just tell me what it cost." Oh, I we see. Did, we did the script and I said, hey, Jimmy, based on your budget, what works best for you? And then you're going to come back and say, well, I, I really don't know what I can afford. Um, let me think about it or whatever. OK. All right. Well, Joe, I, I really don't know what I can afford. Let me just think about this. I understand. I, I get Jimmy. Um, I, I get the feeling here that that. The monthly budget is definitely a major concern for you, correct? Well, obviously it's going to be, it's got to fit within my budget. Right. And I can hear it in your voice that, that I know this is something that you're concerned about and that you want to get taken care of. And, and I really want to help you. Um, let me ask you this, Jimmy, if we could find a program and we could keep the monthly budget under $50, would that work for you? Sure. Okay, so he closed. What if he says, well, I'm not sure. Then I'm going to go back and say, well, Jimmy, at the end of the day, now listen to the one I'm going to say. Jimmy, I just want you to let you know is that you're in total control of what this program is going to cost, not me. You control it. So you tell me based on, because you know your budget better than I do. You tell me based on your budget what you could comfortably afford on a monthly basis. Oh, about um, $35. Okay, perfect. The other way to handle it, guys, is in if you're getting some objection on the payment, because this is an important part of the script. I don't want you to think this is going to be easy. Selling over the phone is tough. And one of the the what we've what we've covered so far is really the easy part. The hard part is getting them closed on payment. OK, I'm going to give you another tip and it's it's called the allocation close. So the other thing I'm going to do, if Jimmy's really not sure what he wants to do, I said, Jimmy, um, let me just share with you what a lot of clients are doing in these days with the current environment and the current situation. Here's the thing, Jimmy, is that I recommend that you don't spend any money on this program that you're not already receiving from Social Security, okay? In fact, what most of our clients are doing, Jimmy, is they're just reallocating the funds that they're already getting from Social Security somewhere between five to 10% to fund their program. Now, Jimmy, if you don't mind sharing with me, what, what are you currently getting from Social Security now? Oh, 960. 960? So Jimmy, if we take your if we take your 960, 960 dollars, based on that, I would recommend that you don't allocate any more than 48 dollars towards this program. Do you feel like 48 dollars would fit into your budget and and uh, wouldn't take any food off your table? Yes. Okay, there you go, guys. So you got to learn to negotiate. You got to learn to be a good payment closer. 
okay? When Jimmy just says, hey, I can't afford nothing, this is a bad time. Jimmy, I understand it's a bad time. If it was a good time, I wouldn't be calling, let's face it. And let's face it, at the end of the day, Jimmy, if, if you know, if you could afford the final expenses, you wouldn't have sent the card in. That's exactly the reason why I'm calling. So you kind of have to use that to your to your to your advantage, guys, on doing this. So assuming that I get Jimmy, and, and hey, before we move any on, before we move any further, because we're we're pretty much at the end of our uh, at the end of the script. Once I close you on payment, from here we just have to transition into doing the application. Any other any other comments or any other any other side notes or anything that you want to add before we move on? Joe, <clears throat> this is an area I want to expand on a little bit on the allocation part, right? So okay. If if uh, if you guys are not sure what we're talking about there, we're talking about they need to change their spending habits, right? So instead of maybe uh, going out to Starbucks every day and spending, you know, two or three bucks for a cup of coffee, right? that adds up to what, $60 a month. Okay, we need to reallocate that $60 spending habit to cover this. So maybe they only go out once a week, right? Obviously with Corona going on, it's gonna be easy to reallocate, but I just wanna give you guys a big tip. A, a lot of the area that we've been able to save money has been with cable services, cable TV that is, right? So I've been in homes where I ask them how much they're spending, and they typically spend $150 to $200 a month for cable and internet. So what I usually do is I dig in and I ask them when, you know, how long have they had that service with that particular uh, provider? And then the second question is, when was the last time they renewed or, you know, uh, uh, had some sort of promotion? usually it's more than one year if it's more than one year without changing their service or, or or their tv lineup you can typically call in and uh tell the the company that they're thinking about you know changing providers because their bill's too high right so then what they'll do is they'll give them a current promotion and and depending on their current service you know, sometimes that's $50 a month savings. Sometimes it's only 20. Sometimes it's $80 a month savings, right? So what we did is we got the savings. They don't have to change their service or their channel lineup. And now we just provided a vehicle to cover their final expense. Now I've done this in person in the house many times over. I call the, the provider up. I tell them my name. I'm with Senior Solutions and I'm sitting here with their client. So now you're just gonna have to transition that to a three-way call. And so, uh, you know, again, the, the beauty of Senior Solutions, the name is that, you know, they're not really sure what that is. They obviously don't think it's a, a, a an insurance agency, you know? So uh, when you're calling on behalf of their client and your client, and, you know, you're trying to bring the bill down, uh, they usually are very cooperative. It's not a hundred percent. Sometimes they're not able to do anything, but most of the time I get the savings. So that's what we're talking about is reallocating. So first you might want to start with their spending habits. What can they do to reallocate their current spending to cover this and get them to agree on it? If you got nowhere to go, then you can go to the the phone bill or or uh, you know their their internet bill, their cable bill, and reallocate that. Get a get a bigger discount. Um, I've done this many times in the field. It does take extra time. So again, you might be on the phone another 30, 45 minutes, but if it makes you a four or five hundred dollar commission, is it worth it? So yeah, plus you look you. like a hero when you do that. Yep. Hey Jimmy, what's the um I'm trying to think off the top of my head because I've done the same thing you, but I'm trying to remember when you call in to the the cable provider. There's a certain department you want to get to. Is it recovery or it's called retention? Retention, yes. If you call, if you call and 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 ask to be connected to the retention department, they know why you're calling. 
Yep. Um, the other thing you can, uh, you know, potentially get into if it's a budget budget issue where they're on a super tight budget is maybe try digging into their medications and you can offer them either good RX or uh, in care RX. Try to find try to f find them some savings on their prescriptions as well is another uh, another area. But the the TV and stuff, man, it that that really does work like a charm because I'm flabbergasted sometimes the amount of money that these seniors are paying on their cable bill. It's in, it's crazy, uh, especially when they're on a you know fixed income of you know eight hundred to fifteen hundred bucks a month or whatever they're getting. Um, all right, anything else before we wrap it up, Jimmy? A uh, couple things. So okay. one, I'd like to have a part two, Joe. There's a bunch of um, I guess you can say content I'd like to cover uh, on on helping make the sell. Um, and then the other thing is I had Michael Mahalik. He texted me. He's asking if you can go back over the the uh, script so everybody has an opportunity to screenshot it. Well, here's what I'm going to do. That's a good question. Don't worry about it. Everybody that's on our list, I'm going to by the end of tonight, I'm going to have this on YouTube and I'm going to email everybody the link so they can watch the video and I'll have the the script um, attached. Perfect. OK. Um, yeah, initially on this call, um, I was going to roll. We, we got a new carrier prosperity that I was going to roll out, but I figured this, you know, this takes precedence. This is much more important to do that. So, guys. We'll go back to the script. I'm assuming that I closed Jimmy on the payments. He says, yeah, I can, yeah, $48, that works, or, you know, whatever you close them on, great. So from here, the next part is, is let, I'll just read this to you. It says, let the client close themselves on the payment. After you close the client on the monthly premium, tighten up the application with the beneficiary, the banking information. From here, you need to let your carrier know that you're going to complete the application with the insurance company. Complete the, any type of required documentations and complete the three-way call with the carrier. And then lastly, before you let your client go, be sure to complete the ERS, the pushback. Make sure the client can afford the premiums. Once it's all sealed up, that day, I've already done it. I sent both my clients I sold over the phone. I sent them both out thank you cards. And I'm going to call them in a few days. I'm going to give them enough time to receive my thank you cards. And uh, I'm going to call them, just see if they have any questions, make sure do, you know, premium solidification, make sure that those premiums are affordable. So you want to make sure, obviously, whatever carrier you're, you're going to use is that you got to make sure that the um, that you're familiar with that carrier. And most of the carriers, if you go to the back end of their website, they have really good training on how to complete the phone interview process. If you're still a little fuzzy on it, um, I know with Liberty Bankers we have, you know, we have a video on how to do uh, how to do Liberty Bankers. But guys, from there you just want to, like I said, man, you just want to go through the application, get everything tightened up. That way, when you do your call in, everything's tight. If you're using Liberty Bankers, make sure you're using the two-page worksheet and you have everything filled out um, and you're ready to go before you make that phone call because you don't want to be stumbling on the phone. Uh, and before we let you guys go, I just want to share my numbers with you. Um, what I did um, two days ago, I took 50 leads. I just went into opt and I, I picked out a date and I printed, I got 50 leads. Uh, and these are all leads that are, like I said, about a year and a half, two years old. Um, I spent six hours on the phone. Okay, one day, six hours. I did 162 dials in six hours. So you guys can do the math on how, you know, how many dials per hour that was. Um, I made nine connections and made two sales. Um, both the deals are done deals. APV was $1,236. And I spent, it took me roughly two hours to complete those two sales. So if you really, if you take, if you take how many dials I did, let's cut that down to four hours. See 162 divided by four because I spent two hours on the phone with just two clients. That's roughly about 40 dials an hour. So that's kind of the number that you're shooting for. Another thing too is that I use the old trick 
I called every client three times. So I get the lead. I purposely, I called them. Um, I call the lead. I only let it ring three times and I hang up. Wait two seconds. I push redial. I dial, let it dial again, hang up, call the third time. I'm telling you, both sales I made were, were third call pickups. And they answered the phone like this, what? <laughs> so, but I got their attention, you know what I mean? So, man, you just got to use all the little techniques um, th that you can. Um, so, and then lastly, uh, preferred telesale carriers. Um, you can do, tel you can do telesales with Transamerica Mutual of Omaha. They will allow it, but there is no phone option. So you got to be emailing back and forth, okay? If that's your only option and you want to go with Mutual of Omaha, that's fine. Um, but I find with people in their 60s and 70s, having them open up attachments and stuff is a little cumbersome and doesn't always go well, okay? My recommendation are the four carriers below, Liberty Bankers, Americo, Royal Neighbors, Prosperity Life. They all have voice signature applications. Now, Prosperity is our is our newest carrier. Um, we just got our uh, just got our writing numbers with them a couple of days ago. Of the care of the four carriers of the bottom, the ones that do voice signature, Prosperity Life is the only carrier that does Direct Express. So if you get that client that has the Direct Express card or Ooh, some type of ATM card. That's the carrier you want to make sure that you're signed up for. Okay. And I believe that's it. Oh, no, leads. I want to talk about leads real quick. Um, YIG, B leads, a buck 50, guys. These are old leads, but who cares? Let me just highlight something with you. Um, I just, some of the states that we do business in, uh, Florida, there's currently 22,000 B leads in Florida. Illinois, there's 30,000. Indiana, 47,000. Kentucky, we have eight. Massachusetts, there's 5,800. North Carolina, 26,000. Ohio, we have 8,000. Uh, Pennsylvania, 41,000. Tennessee, we have 15,000. Texas, we have 6,000 leads in those states, guys. Um, also, another source that a couple of our agents have used is this company called Age Lead or Age Lead Store? So if you just Google that Age Lead Store, you can buy uh, older leads. These are internet leads, but they're really cheap. Uh, I like really cheap, like a couple of cents or something like that. I don't a nickel or a quarter or whatever. I, it depends. The more you buy, the the cheaper it is. Uh, but you, if you're looking for people to call, if you don't have, you know, if you haven't been doing this for five or ten years like me and you don't have you know, thousands of leads in your database, you're gonna need to go out and you're need to, gonna get a bunch of leads. So these are just resources. You got YIG, you got Age Leads. Jimmy, any other lead sources that you can think of before we let everybody go, how they can get extra leads? Well, specifically to the guys in my, in my group, in my agency, okay. You have a, a very valuable lead source that's very inexpensive, and that is Jimmy Hernandez. I have a huge, I have thousands of leads. So if you're in my downline, give me a call. We'll work out a deal. Pretty much all in the state of Texas, right? Uh, I do have a few outside of Texas, but okay. the majority's in Texas. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Um, well, with this, man, I think this has been a really good call. I think. Uh, I think anyone who listens to this is going to be able to benefit uh, from the content. If you need more like specific training, coaching, or if you need specific uh, information on, uh, you know, a carrier, you know, get with me, get with Jimmy, get with your upline manager so we can get you the proper training on the, um, you know, on the carrier that you're going to be uh, going to be using. All right, buddy. Well, with that, I mean, everybody stay safe. Uh, be smart about this this coronavirus. Don't take any chances. Uh, pra practice social distancing. Only go to the store when you have to. Make sure you're using 
sanitizer or wipes or, you know, just be safe, man. I just, I, I would hate to see anybody in, uh, in our agency get sick from this thing. All right, Jimmy, anything else, buddy? That's it, Joe. All yeah. right, my man, you have an awesome day, brother. All right, bye-bye. All right, man, take care. God bless everybody, bye.